Hey, my beautiful friends, here is your horoscope for the week of February 17th, going all the way until the 23rd. Now, this week, depending on where you are, where you live, your time zones, all that good jazz, you may be beginning your Mercury retrograde um, in the energy of Pisces, where it will begin, but it will also dance through the energy of Aquarius as well. Either way, that is still an energy that is on your table here at the beginning of the week. And so one of the things I wanted to say, and I thought about it after the other Mercury retrograde video from ending last week is that during this transit, you may just not be so clear. Like you may feel like, where is your intuition guiding you? Or maybe you feel a little bit less clear than you normally would. It is okay to just um, gather information, right? It is okay to be a little bit confused. It is okay to understand that there doesn't have to be full clarity during this particular Mercury retrograde. It can be a time of gathering information and it may be emotional information that you are gathering because it is the planet of Mercury and he loves that information. But this time it may be on an emotional level. You will get clarity as the retrograde continues on and certainly as it comes out of the retrograde in March, okay? So I just, in case that's something that comes up for you, I just want you to know that. Now, as we continue trucking into this week, right at the beginning of the week, we see energies shift a little bit from that sun energy in the energy of Aquarius. Now it's moving into the energy of Pisces. So happy, happy birthday, my Pisces friends, my fish. I love you guys. It's so interesting. As an energy in Pisces, because Pisces is that energy that walks between the worlds, one of the things that we can see and you may experience happening this week is the duality of what that looks like right because Pisces is a dual sign it's got those two fish so one side is like artsy and just all the poetry and the love and the self-sacrificing and it's just it's just heart out right and the other side is very much so about escape it's this very escape energy and I have always found this energy really fascinating to study with Pisces energies, not just Pisces people, but wherever the Pisces energies are in our charts. So this week you may begin to experience some of that, right? Where it's like, where do you have to look at where you're escaping, where you're avoiding, where you are hell bent on staying in your own way, as opposed to where is your heart just open? It's very tender. You're just very giving in this particular set of energy. With the sun here in Pisces, though, remember, the sun is motivation. You are motivated to work and to shine and to say, ta-da, here I am in this particular energy. So with the sun here in the energy of Pisces, your, your empathy is turned on. You can be more sensitive to other people's feelings, their needs, their wants, connecting with other people. Um, I think that it can be a time where maybe charity is on your table. You want to give to other people, people who are in our specialized populations. You know, maybe they're pregnant, maybe they're elderly, maybe they are babies. Um, Maybe you're spending time bringing um, hope and healing to jails, institutions, something like that. This is where your son is like, da-da, I want to be seen. I'm motivated to grow here. So this is a beautiful set of water energy, I think, for all of us to explore in the depth of our emotions and just our Pisces placements on our chart. So this will be a good week to begin to explore Another that. thing to keep in mind as you're exploring this Pisces energy as the sun is traveling through here, Pisces in the natural zodiac lives in our 12th house so we always want to look across the street as to what's happening in the other side and that's our sixth house the health the house of health daily routines and things like that so I would just caution you as well make sure you're keeping up with your health if you feel like something's going on or something presents itself in your health zone please be very much so on top of that and take care of it now if the other thing that's happening in your health or your mental wellness zone is that you're just feeling very, very sensitive, take care of yourself. Give yourself the downtime, the rest time, maybe the solitude time that you do need, okay? All right, on the 20th, we've got Jupiter who's over here in Capricorn coming into a sextile with Neptune who is also in Pisces. Now remember when the planets have sex, that is good for us because it's not only a pocket of opportunity, but you will intelligently take action on this opportunity. So I think that with the sun, being in this Pisces energy as well, it's kind of nice because what it seems to me in the idea of taking advantage of this opportunity is that 
you will be willing to to move something like you trust the process of something it is an intuitive thing that's going on and even though this mercury is retrograde here as well it's like here you feel like you're solid to trust your intuition or to trust the process to the unfold. other thing i think is ideal about this particular placement is this is a time for you to redefine your ideals in this particular area of your life if this does happen to be in your work or your career what defines your ideal workplace how do you define yourself as the ideal employee or ideal employer, right? Because if you don't kind of check in to see, are you even meeting your ideals of what this area should look like? How do you know if you're growing towards them or you're not? So I think that the ideals become this place where you can make a little bit of a fresh start. With that Mercury retrograde here, it may help you to see where you need to adjust or redefine. What is your ideal level of health or what is your ideal level? level of, of the perfect body or the perfect um, amount of sleep or solitude, or the perfect house. Wherever this is happening in your chart, use this time, use that sextile to look at those perfect ideals for yourself. Now, as we okay. get to Friday, February 21st, we see Mars and Uranus coming into a trine with each other. Now, whenever Mars and Uranus dance together. It doesn't really matter their combination. It is intense. And this also, Mars is a very physical energy. Uranus is very electric. So this can stimulate a lot of physical energy in the body. Sometimes our sex drives go crazy. Sometimes our do stuff drives go crazy. And in a trine, this is an easy energy. So that energy is flowing quite easily through you. So it is an intense energy, and one of the things I would just remind you, if you can, is because instincts may be pushing so strong here, make sure you do something productive with yourself physically that doesn't bring harm to yourself or other people, of course. But this is a trying. Chill out. Take it easy. Go for a nice run. It doesn't have to be the run of your lifetime. You know, whatever it is that expresses this physical energy, if you need to have some time with you with you, you know what I'm talking about, do that. This is a gentle energy. Energy, you know, let your hair down, release, relax a little but bit. But at here. the same but time, know that these particular energies need to be channeled into something productive. And this can be that idea of action and energy and movement. Mars comes into an ease of coming into new ideas, innovative ideas. You're honest. How do you think outside of the box? Where can you do something a little bit different? Where can you be creative in a way that you haven't been creative? Where can you take actions and have strategy in a way that you hadn't thought of before? Maybe in a way that even is a little bit more inclusive. You know, do your actions need to include a grouping of people? Or does it need to include something in, in um, terms of an organization, right? Think Uranian energies. Where do you get the grouping of human power behind what you're doing to amplify it? to create the electricity here. Either way, this combo is good. It's just intense. Just make sure you channel that energy. Okay? And as always, it is Uranus. So please expect surprises or the unexpected because Uranus does like to bring a little ta-da to the table for all of us. Now, as we roll into the end of the week and we get to the 23rd, we see the new moon happening in the energy of Pisces. The new moon is where we're going to plant our seeds of intention. But remember, the new moon is the quietest, darkest time of our moon cycle. So you're planting these seeds literally in the dark. You have no idea exactly how they're going to blossom, but you plant those seeds down there and you trust that as long as you are doing the footwork, the universe is going to grab a hold of this and you can have your fresh start, right? So what is the fresh start that you want here at this new moon? What are you planting those seeds of intention for? It does not have to be to start something completely new. I mean, how could we ever get on with life if all we're doing is always start starting a new job, always having a new relationship. It doesn't have to be that. Where do you just need a fresh start in your perspective? in your emotional life, in your intuition, in your connection? Do you need a fresh start with being willing to go put your toes in the grass once a week, right? Like where do you need your fresh start? This is where you plant those seeds of intention. The other thing I think of under this sun and moon conjunction, which is what brings us a new moon, is the fact that anything is possible. So Pisces, being the natural ruler of the 12th house, where we transition things out or we bring things to culmination, the 12th house is also the house of our own undoing, where you will undo yourself, right? So this is a time that I think at this new moon to ask, 
Where can I compassionately surrender myself and my bad habits or my habits that have got me, right? Where can I compassionately surrender myself to something new, to a new reg regimen in my life, to some kind of new thinking, to a new awakening that will benefit me physically, mentally, materially, spiritually? Where can I be awakened here to literally save my own life, okay? I think that this is going to be a powerful week. A new moon week always is. As we get ready to wrap it up, we also see Venus, who's over in Aries, in a square to Jupiter, who's in Capricorn. And even though this is a square, Venus and Jupiter do love each other. They enjoy working together. So this may just be challenging you to see, again, where can you surrender you for a greater good this week, right? Where can you surrender what you've got going on, the habits you've had, to something that is just much more expansive and intuitive to help you move things forward? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you so much, and I'm hoping as we get into the March weekly videos, I won't have such a raspy voice. So thanks for working with me, sticking with me, and I've got all the lemon and honey water in the world going. So thank you for your love and your support this week, you guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye.